long time since I've given any thought to the candy Pez and its handy dispensers, but it does have a lengthy history, a rich tradition, and is quite the rage on the collectible market. Ah, Craig, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? Good seeing you. Nice to see you. Like a Pez? Great. Okay, there you go. Oh, thank you. Orange. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, what do you got there? Got Lucy. Yeah, okay. There you oh, go. Oh, grape. Grape, I like grape. And what better way to offer glad tidings of the day than the mutual sharing of Pez, the candied comfort food that is international in scope and time-tested since the 20s. Pez is shaped like a tiny brick, offered in four fruit flavors and wrapped in stacks of 12. Its most endearing feature is its dispensers, featuring the head of a major cartoon icon, which when flicked back produces a Pez through its neck. And it is this dispenser, even more than the candy, that captures the passion of Indianapolis graphic designer Craig Ogden. For he has an exhibit of his personal vintage Pez dispensers in the foyer of the bustling Broad Ripple Library. Ogden has about 150 different Pez dispensers in his collection, less than half of what it would take for the complete works. Some of them get into the hundreds of dollars, um, and then you can still buy them today in the store for around a dollar. That's what makes it such a fun collectible. And such is its appeal as a collectible that Collectible Pez has its own price guides, fan newsletter, and annual conventions like Pezzomania. Of course, Craig and fellow collectors find their wallets quickly lighten in their pursuit of the crown jewels of Pez dispensers, notably one of the few featuring the character's full body, body beautiful himself, Mr. Claus. The Santa's unique because he's the first one. How, how much does he go for in the market these days? Uh, anywhere from $125 to $175 if you can find them. Really hard to find. Also prizes the peanut gang's most difficult member, Lucy, notably the Lucy on the right, when her likeness was inadvertently produced with white facial features instead of black, making her even more intimidating than usual, and which is why she is known among Pez collectors as Psycho Lucy. And thus, it's best we keep Psycho Lucy away from the Pez collectible weaponry. They have uh, a bunch of different Pez guns. This one was from the 1980s, this is from the 40s, and this one was from the 50s and it has a clip just like a real gun and you unload your Pez and put them down in here just like the body of a regular Pez and then clip it back in and shoot. Ooh, okay. Which they would not have today because you could really put an eye out that way. The Pez dispensers market in Canada show even more creativity and flair than those brought south of its border. A really unique thing about them is um, they have a little kazoo in the back. Very nice sound, and that's something that we don't have on the American Pez. Pez the candy has its roots in Austria in the late 20s, developed by Edward Haas, a successful baking powder manufacturer, who merged peppermint oil with sugar and geared it to adults as a breath mint. Haas was among the first to see the culinary value of the peppermint herb, and the name of his new breath sweetener emerged from the German pronunciation, Fezermins. I like the name Pez, though. It's not like any other name. The dispensers didn't come about until 1948, strictly functional and resembling a cigarette lighter. It wasn't until Pez came to our shores around 1952 did the dispensers take on a life of their own, as Pez catered to American taste buds by offering the fruit flavors, dutifully marketing them as candy, and thus thrusting Pez into the demanding children's market by placing the heads of their favorite cartoon role models on the dispensers, starting with Santa and the Mick, and tailoring much of it to the holiday seasons kids cherish, with the likes of Garfield knowing they arrived as a tune when the Pez dispenser became their pedestal. And Hollywood soon turned to Pez as a symbol of the American culture, as is explained to E.T., the visiting extraterrestrial. If you want to know about the American soul, you must know about its Pez. See, this is Pez. Candy. So you eat it. You put the candy in here, and then when you lift up the head, candy comes out, and you can eat it. You want some? And in the film, Stand By Me, Pez is used as a vehicle to ponder deep, universal truths. If I can only have one food for the rest of my life, that's easy. Pez. Cherry flavor Pez. No question about it. Ironically, Pez no longer makes cherry flavor, replacing it with politically correct strawberry. But the solid Pez flavors hold up very well, with Pez's 23-year-old American plant in Connecticut producing a billion Pez pellets a year, feeling no need to advertise or get involved in the collector's mania their dispensers have created. For Pez can stand on its own as something that tastes good, and is no doubt good for you, taking in at least three of the major food groups. Sugar and, um, and sugar and flavor. And for dedicated collectors like Craig Ogden, offering so much more. It's just from having him as a child, 
Um, it just brings back memories. I think everybody had a Pez as a kid. The only difference is if you want the same Pez dispenser you had as a kid, you may have to shell out 50 bucks more, but such is the price in the 90s for fond childhood memories of the 50s and beyond. You know, the kid in Stand By Me is right. Cherry flavored Pez was the best, and I miss it. Well, someday perhaps I'll have my head on a Pez dispenser. Dare to dream. Well, that's the Reed Duffy Chronicles for this edition. Thanks for stopping by. Hope to see you next time. Good night.